which is going to be represented by Mrs Malmstrom. I'll give Mrs Malmstrom a second to take a seat and settle in. So, Mrs Malmstrom, you have the floor. Yes, thank you very much, Madam um, President. Yes, the High Representative is unfortunately ill with very short notice, so I'm replacing her. Dear members, uh, good evening. Uh, Kenya is an essential player in East Africa, an economic powerhouse, an important pivot for regional stability. We all know how fragile the Horn of Africa is with conflicts in Somalia, Burundi, Sudan and South Sudan. And we all know how important this region is for Europe as a connection between the Mediterranean and the Indian Ocean, between Europe, Africa and Asia. We Europeans are strongly committed to that region with our development cooperation, with our investment, with our military and civilian missions, but also a growing diplomatic engagement. Let me recall the meeting convened by the High Representative Mogherini and Ministers of IGAD countries late September in Brussels. And that meeting is intended to be repeated this year. This makes Kenya a natural and vital interlocutor for us. Kenya's positive role in regional dynamics is impossible to underestimate. In relative prosperity, democracy and stability uh, is, are essential to the whole of East Africa. Kenyan troops are contributing to peace and security around Africa, starting with Somalia, Somalia, and the country has given shelter to about half a million refugees fleeing from war in other African countries. Kenya's strength matters for all of us, but also for its own citizens and for the rest of Africa and the European Union. And Kenya's strength and resilience very much depend on democracy and rule of law in that country. And that is why Kenya's rising middle class demands to improve its business environment and attract more investment. All Kenyans aspire to free and fair elections with credible and accountable institutions. We have always supported Kenya in its path towards a stronger democracy, including through election observers to every Kenyan presidential election since 2002. And this is also, I think, an example of Kenya's commitment to transparency and to their relationship with the European Union. Our observation missions are never meant to declare a winner. That's not our job. They are there to observe, to report, and to make recommendations on how to strengthen the electoral process. And the electoral observation mission to Kenya last year has reported substantial progress uh, compared to previous elections. And yet, the 2017 electoral process was still marked by some irregular irregularities, political polarization, and acts of violence. As you know, the mission's final report was published last week. A chief observer, Marice Shake, and her team covered both the August general election and the unforeseen but historical, uh, historic decision by the Kenyan Supreme Court to order a rerun of the presidential election last October. The mission's recommendation for the rerun election already played a constructive role. In particular, they helped the Kenyan Electoral Commission to make systematic changes, which largely wiped up irregularity in the transmission and tallying of results. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank um, Marie Shaki and her team for the fantastic job that you did there. The mission's conduct has been balanced, constructive and highly professional in line with the terms of the agreement with the Kenyan authority. And throughout the electoral process, uh, the mission that Mrs. Shaki and her colleagues have reported about, uh, they have reported both the irregularities and the progress they witnessed in the best interests of Kenya's democracy and of Kenyan citizens. Despite this overall positive environment, the mission has received criticism from supporters on both political sides. And this wasn't just unpleasant, it was totally unjustified. The mission's final report provides a good basis to discuss how to further improve Kenya's electoral system. And we are ready to support this work. And the High Representative Mogherini has sent senior officials to Nairobi on Saturday to pass this message to the Kenyan authorities, even if no government is yet fully formed. There is room to build on the progress already achieved, and there is a duty to do so for the people of Kenya. Kenya can move towards more inclusive governance and more inclusive development. All communities and ethnic groups should feel that they have a role in the country's present and future. 
Kenyans have already decided that the devolution of powers in the existing constitutional tool to achieve this goal. Kenya has a huge potential for economic and human development. It can be a force for stability and growth in the whole region. But the only way to unleash its, unleash its potential is by making Kenya's democracy stronger and more credible. And the people of Kenya can count on the European Union to help them achieve their potential. And I know that the people of Kenya can count on the European Parliament. So again, thank, me for the, thank you for the work that you have been doing. It is difficult, it can be exhausting, but it is truly contributing to peace, security and democracy in our common region. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Frau Kommissari. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Mr. Venter has the floor for three minutes. Uh, thank you very much, Madam President. As Madam Commissioner rightly pointed out, the presidential elections were repeated in Kenya in October 2017, this time with higher standards, more transparent procedures, and better control procedures. There were certain irregularities pointed out by the Electoral Commission, but nonetheless, the Supreme Court has decided that Uhuru Kenyatta has won. However, what is very worrying is a political conflict. Due to the fact that the electoral law was changed, has been changed, but very late. The same applies to the changes in the composition of the Electoral Commission. Such changes should be carried out far in advance, ahead of the elections, and should be based on a wide-ranging consensus. What we need is a dialogue between the President and his proponents and the opposition, so as to avoid further divisions, because those divisions become divisions of an ethnic nature, so violence is a substantial risk. Let us look at the recommendations of the Electoral Observation Mission. The government should be open to work together with the opposition. The election bodies should be impartial. The independent electoral commission in Kenya needs to be strengthened so that the election results are not questioned. We should also condemn the excessive use of violence and repressions against the opposition. The use of the firearms by the security services against the demonstrators is to be condemned. More than 60 people have died. Raila Odinga should also refrain from questioning the constitutional order of the country. He has unilaterally, or he was going to unilaterally announce that he is the people's president. Instead, he should focus on peaceful and legal means under constructive oppositions. It is necessary that all the Kenyan political forces work together so that the violence from the period 2007-2008 does not repeat itself. 1,500 people died back then. The recommendations from the uh, EU missions are very important, geared towards uh, improving the election process and creating solid framework. There are certain problems, but we need to look towards the future because Kenya remains one of the most stable and democratic African countries. Therefore, we should try to improve our cooperation with this country. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of the European People's Party, that was Mr. Venta. Now we have the representative of the Progressive Alliance of Socialists and Democrats in the European Parliament, and it's Mrs. Julie Ward. You have four minutes. Uh, thank you, Madam President. After a troubled electoral year, the situation in Kenya is still very tense. I visited the country three times in the 12 months from December 2016 and also received members of Kenyan civil society in my office. I've developed relationships with a wide range of stakeholders, therefore, and I want to reiterate my support to the Kenyan people who were so keen to engage in democratic life. When I visited Kenya in my role as a European Parliament election observer last August, 
I was struck by the enthusiasm of the citizens who turned out in huge numbers, waiting patiently in line in the cold and the dark, including many women with babies on their backs, waiting for hours for the polling stations to open so they could cast their votes. We do not often see such enthusiasm in Europe, so the Kenyans have much to teach our citizens about the importance of freedom and democracy. As we know, the presidential election was subsequently cancelled by the Kenyan Supreme Court, a brave and unparalleled decision which gave hope to many who believed the election process to be seriously flawed. This should have paved the way for better democracy and increased trust, However, the continuing intransigence of political forces has dashed the hopes of many. I know that colleagues from different political groups share my concerns about Kenya's future, especially in lights of reports about the use of excessive force by the police and the serious situation of human rights defenders on the ground, including indigenous people such as the Sengwa, recently violently evicted from their forest homes with two reportedly shot this very morning by the Kenyan authorities. My group and I encourage all political forces in Kenya to genuinely engage in constructive dialogue in order to find solutions to the deep crisis in which the country still finds itself. They owe it to the citizens, and especially to those who contributed to the writing of the Kenyan constitution adopted in 2010 following earlier election violence. The European Union must continue to support Kenyan institutions in order to increase transparency and credibility and improve governance. The institutions, including the IEBC, must regain the trust of the Kenyan people. Political forces in the country, including the government, must also respect the institutions, especially the judiciary. And the EOM report very clearly, clearly states that the judiciary institutions have shown their independence during these difficult times, but have also come under increasing pressure from political forces. This is unacceptable and must stop. As a frequent electoral observer, I can also say that my experience has taught me that we should improve the way we observe elections, in particular with regard to recent technological innovations made to processes worldwide. Voting, electoral voting changes the way that votes are counted and transmitted, and fraud can't be observed in the same way if votes are cast on paper or on a machine and counted by hand or number crunched on a computer. The interference in democratic processes in the UK, the USA and in Kenya by big data companies such as Cambridge Analytica, as reported by Carol Cadwallader, amounts to a hijacking of democracy and we must be alert to these dangers. In accordance with our socialist values, my group and I support civil society organisations as an essential component of peaceful elections. And I was pleased to be invited to a recent event facilitated by the Quaker movement on preventing deadlocked and violent elections in Kenya and elsewhere. It's very important to ensure that women and young people are included in political processes at all levels in order to prevent conflict around elections. And this can only be efficient if done through civil society organisations working at a grassroots level. The shrinking space of civil society is extremely concerning in this regard and not only in Kenya. So as a member of the Electoral Observation Mission, I want to highlight and support the work of Maricha Shaka as Chief Observer. I stand by Ms. Shaka's final report and conclusions and support its recommendations. It's important that all parties involved understand we must remain critical friends. Thank you, Sean. Uh, Thank you. For the European Conservatives and Reformist Group, Mr. Tannock has the floor for two minutes. Madam President, 2017 was indeed a very difficult year for Kenya. As Democrats in this House, we all feel a profound sense of sadness when we observe elections that are flawed. And reading the reports from Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, and our own EU election observation mission, this seems to have been the case for both elections in Kenya last year. 
It was hoped that the historic ruling of the Supreme Court last September calling for fresh presidential elections would have made way for a new and fairer poll. However, evidence shows that on the contrary, independent institutions were attacked by political leaders, the police again used disproportionate force, and the independence of the judiciary and the Electoral Commission were still put into question. It's particularly worrying that the Supreme Court was unable to hear a case seeking postponement of polling the day before the fresh election was due to take place due to the lack of a quorum of judges. Was pressure applied on the judges not to turn up on the day, I ask? It's also deeply regrettable that opposition candidate Ryla Odinga felt he had no choice but to withdraw as a candidate. Where does Kenya go from here? The weight of responsibility now clearly lies on the shoulders of the Jubilee Party and President Kenyatta. The world will be watching closely. It's a testament to the courage and resilience of the Kenyan people that their country has not descended into a civil war, frankly. Kenya must now come together again to uphold, uphold the rule of law and fundamental freedoms that are, un, in, that are indispensable to a flourishing democratic modern nation. The EU and the African Union must fully support Ken, Kenya in all these aspirations. Thank you. On behalf of the, I do beg your pardon. On behalf of the Alliance of Liberals and Democrats for Europe, Mrs. Kaka has the floor for three minutes. Thank you, Madam President, Madam Commissioner, and colleagues. When I was in Kenya leading the EU election observation mission, people would often ask whether we were holding Kenya or Africa to lower standards of democracy. The resounding answer is no. It is unacceptable to hold Kenya or any country for that matter to a lower standard. Instead, the EU assesses the extent to which elections meet Kenya's own legal standards and commitments under human rights and international law. Unfortunately, during the 2017 elections, people's rights were not always upheld and trust eroded. Our final report, which is available for everyone to read, looks at the gap between law and practice and gives 29 recommendations. The elections laid bare existing tensions and created new ones that all Kenyans suffer from. No, the standoff has not resulted in as many casualties as in the past, but every death and every death by a police bullet is one too many. Some Kenyans complained that the world only has attention for the country when tensions escalate into violence. And I believe the EU should be smarter and engage Kenya on core topics that benefit all Kenyans. Strengthening the rule of law and good governance, supporting civil society and respect for human rights, fighting corruption and overcoming ethnic tensions. These are just a few areas that I think we hear not enough about while we hear lots about countering terrorism and trade and other such issues. Anyone who has followed the discussions on Kenya knows that over the past week, strong words have been used against me. These statements have been revealing, but I hope mudslinging will not distract from the substantial discussion on our recommendations, on electoral reform, and on the joint way forward for Kenyans. I would like to thank the Commissioner, the External Action Service and colleagues for their words of support for the work of my team and the recommendations that we make. I'm glad that the EU speaks with one voice. I call on Kenya's political leaders from both sides to show constructive leadership and rebuild trust. Integrity should be baked into the electoral system regardless of who's in charge and the independence of institutions such as the judiciary should clearly be respected by all. Over the past days when people read the more critical remarks in our report they said but Kenya is the most successful country in East Africa. Yet just because things could be worse it doesn't mean that they're good or good enough. I remain convinced we should never hold Kenya to a lower standard including on the respect for human rights. And I have met many Kenyans who are keen to enjoy the highest levels of democracy in their country. I wish them strength going forward and for the EU to be their principled partner. Thank you.
Dankeschön. Thank you. On behalf of the United European Left Nordic Green Left, let me now give the floor to Maria Lidia Rodriguez. Señora Comisaria. Thank you, President. Thank you, Commissioner. I'm very sorry that uh, uh, Mrs. Mogherini isn't here. I hope she gets well soon. However, what we would like to say to her is that the solution is based on the EU uh, stopping uh, meddling, and it needs to use peaceful ways so that uh, development isn't used for military purposes. The Commission has to make sure that working classes are empowered and they have better access to production means, natural resources, and uh, making sure that there is food sovereignty. We also believe that in Kenya we have to work tirelessly to fight against land grabbing and a fair share of the land. 98% of the people in rural areas only own 11.7% of the land. And we also need to make it easier to access seeds and water so that it is the uh, Kenyan farmers, uh, the men and women, that can feed their people. We also have to make it easier easier for people to access water and public services such as health care and education. We also believe that the EU has to make sure that uh, security, food and de decent working conditions exist for the Somali refugees in the Dabab refugee camp. They are fleeing drought, poverty uh, and hunger after the American intervention destroyed Somalia 20 years ago. And we also have to make sure that um, these refugees can return. Thank you. On behalf of the group of the Greens European Free Alliance, let me now give the floor to Mrs. Valera. Two minutes. Thank you very much. Building a functioning democracy and it's something that we have had here for an awful long time. Uh, it's something we tend to take for granted, and that's rather dangerous, because we tend to give up a little bit on fighting for it, and yet it's always under threat. And we've got a number of young democracies in our member states. And we can see that uh, what uh, we uh, think are the right rules for democratic operation are put out of order. And we see that in our own countries. Now, uh, for, you need to be able to hold elections uh, under organized uh, conditions, and we need to be sure that electoral fraud doesn't take place. A party needs to be able to participate on an equal basis, and uh, you need to be able to have a peaceful handover of power. Talking about Pena, uh, Kenya, we know that not all of these requirements have been met in the recent elections, and the last one uh, ended up in violence between various groups and a number of deaths, and uh, the, the, the most recent election is no ex exception to that. Uh, I met my green colleagues in Kenya to get their picture of what exactly Kenya requires now to make progress along the path to a better democracy. And first on their list is reform the electoral system in order to provide for credible elections at every time during the course of that election. The respect of institutions and the principles of the rule of law as a cornerstone of democracy, these must be strengthened. And there is a need, therefore, for constitutional reforms that would strengthen the institutions and increase respect for law and rules. And an independent uh, investigation into the recent violence uh, with those uh, who are responsible brought to book. Uh, political mobilization needs to be organized around specific ideas and ideologies rather than simply uh, ethnic alliances and uh, uh, particular int int interests. So you need the active participation of citizens. That needs to be strengthened not only during the election but on issues relating to policy and decision making both with and without the government. On the list also are, is equality for women, minorities, and people with disabilities to be able to participate in politics and to be uh, to stand for election. And not, last but not least, uh, my green f f friends have said that uh, you need to be able to p protect the environment. Thank you. On behalf of the Europe of Freedom and Direct Democracy Group, let me give the floor to Mr. Finch for two minutes. Uh, the present reaction to the situation in Ken Kenya is worrying. Kenya should be seen as a keystone of democracy in the continent. Africa and its partners across the world rely on Kenya 
to lead the way regarding elections and democracy. I have a strong belief that Kenya's democratic institutions can and do work and must be supported and strengthened. The democracy of Kenya is crucial, not only for Kenya, but for the Horn of Africa and for Africa's relationship to the wider world. A strong and free Kenya brings security to the Horn of Africa and can be an important strategic ally for us all. The European Union must not destabilize Kenya by simply picking one side. This helps nobody except those who wish ill to democracy. One must ask why, alone amongst international observers, the European Union refuses to acknowledge that the election was comparatively free of issues. There needs to be international help for Kenya to enable trust rather than trying to kick away the foundations. In this matter, the EU is running the risk of being perceived as acting in a high-handed and neo-colonialist manner. It needs to be understood that Kenya is a pivotal country in Africa and is a key partner for us all in the fight against terrorism. So let us understand that to hold Kenya to a different standard than other nations is both unfair and runs the risk of alienating our true friends. Thank you. So as, uh, for the fraction, now for the Europe of Nations and Freedom Group, I give the floor to Mr Loiseau for one and a half minutes. Oui, merci. Thank you very much. Commissioner, what would we say were Kenya to judge our elections? I'm not sure that Kenyan election observers would find the elections that take place in the different countries of Europe very democratic, the way they muzzle the opposition. I mean, there has been an election in Kenya. There were irregularities twice. Mr. Kenyatta was fraudulently elected. I don't think anyone would say differently, even Mrs. Sharka, chief observer of the EU Electoral Observation Mission, changed her mind between August and October of 2017. I mean, what I think we should actually be looking at, though, in spite of all of that, is Kenya itself. It's a peaceful country, much more peaceful than many of its neighbours. It's growing economically, and it is a beacon of stability in East Africa. Given the dramatic situation of the countries neighbouring it, South Sudan and Somalia, I think uh, Kenya is in a good position. I mean, in addition, there is the threat of Islamist terrorism. I mean, let's not forget al-Shabaab and the courageous fight that Kenya is undertaking to try and stop them. I mean, perhaps Kenya is not as virtuous as the European Union, but it is a sovereign state and it could engage in a common fight with us against terrorism. So I think it is dangerous to destabilize it without having the means to know exactly what was wrong with the election. To conclude, the European observation, electoral observation missions are, as their name indicates, made up of observers rather than judges. So I think we should not interfere in their electoral process. We should work with them. Thank you. Let me now give the floor to Mr. Sinadinos uh, for one minute uh, for the non-touch members. Madam President, after Kenya became independent from uh, Great Britain in 1963, like other former colonial African and Asian countries, was drawn into a downward spiral of political, economic and social turmoil. The colonialists left, but in fact, in a way, they remain. Uh, their puppet governments, uh, they're stifling the economy, they're exploiting uh, natural resources and their economic, their economic and political dependence on the former uh, colonial powers. And then you, to that you have to add overpopulation, religious fanaticism, drought, uh, tribal tension and uh, outbreaks of deadly epidemics. Of course, I don't expect uh, the former uh, colonial powers, the European countries, to set their former colonies free. However, for the good of Europe, I hope that they will move forward with policies that will uh, properly tackle the problem of illegal migration, the danger of infectious disease spreading uh, to Europe, and the humanitarian crisis in third countries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
those were the group speakers. Now we're going to move on to other members. Mr. McAllister, now you have uh, three minutes. Verehrte Frau Präsident. Madam President, ladies and gentlemen. Including the European Parliament has deployed election observation missions to all Kenyan general elections since 2002. The presence of an election observation mission has always been seen as an important instrument to support Kenya in navigating a potentially difficult election and consolidating the country's democratic path under its new constitution. So naturally for the 2017 elections, an election observation mission was also deployed. I was in Nairobi for the elections on the 8th of August, heading a seven-member EP delegation, which was integrated in the long-term EU mission headed by our chief observer, Marietje Schrake. It is important to stress that our EU election observation mission made a very balanced evaluation of the electoral results. All the members who were there, including myself, observed the process in Nairobi, Kayado, and Naivasha and reach conclusions which were fully in line with the mission's findings. I would also like to point out that right after the elections, when the opposition issued a press statement that the election IT systems had been hacked and the election results fundamentally compromised, it was the international observers and especially the EU election observation mission who unanimously called on political leaders to act responsibly, to pursue any complaints through legal dispute mechanisms and to ensure their supporters remain calm. This was a crucial moment in this difficult electoral process. Dear colleagues, we should support the EU election observation mission and our chief observer, Marietje Schrake, the analysis and conclusions they made and the ensuing 29 recommendations which were presented last week in Brussels. As in the past in Kenya, the entire electoral process has been extremely difficult and created a lot of tension in the country. Now it is time for the government and the opposition to engage in a constructive dialogue in a reconciliation spirit. It's time for the Kenyan politicians to bring the people together and work towards an inclusive and socially cohesive society for all Kenyans. Political parties have an important responsibility in this process including by becoming more program and more policy focused and overcoming their reliance on ethnic divisions. Finally, the challenges and questions around the Kenyan elections have triggered a reflection, including consideration of the growing role of technology. We as the European Parliament, together with the European External Action Service, should reflect on how to better face the new electoral challenges in this respect. In addition, the mid-2018 in mid-2018, the Democracy Support and Election Coordination Group will organize a high-level election observation conference with the participation of the representatives of EU national parliaments and international organizations, where the case of Kenya will also further be discussed and looked into. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sean. As next Thank you. Our next speaker is Mrs. Kienge. Three minutes. Merci. En août dernier, le Ken Thank you. Last August, Kenya undertook a democratic exploit when the Supreme Court cancelled the elections for procedural reasons. That shows the level of democracy the country has reached because the judiciary showed itself to be free. This brave act gave hope to the entire continent, which needs democracy more than ever. The outgoing president, Mr. Kenyatta, uh, bent himself to the decision of the judges, which doesn't always happen. But since then, the electoral process has taken a bad term, turn, which, uh, because the Electoral Commission saw people leave it. We, uh, it already had a bad reputation. Now, what we regret the most is that, unfortunately, the Kenyan elections have once again caused human lives to be lost and the country is still divided subsequent to the, the elections. During the previous elections, Kenya underwent a civil war which caused many victims and uh, it seems that Kenya now risks moving away from democracy as a result of that. We need to urge the authorities in the country to move the country towards a peaceful democratic practice. I would urge those
countries that carried out the electoral observation in Kenya to continue to work for peace and democracy in the country. Prior to each elections, voters need to be helped and the Electoral Commission needs to be given appropriate training. We need to ensure that there are no open conflicts in Kenya. We, I think we need sustainable solutions to these structural problems. The European Union has to find ways of better supporting the democratic uh, approach of the Kenyan people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Luca, now two minutes. Madam President, ladies and gentlemen, listening to some of the speakers this afternoon, I would say, as one of the members of the Electoral Observation Mission in Kenya earlier this last year, that uh, there's a bit of a distorted image here. We electoral observers did not note the electoral process being seriously flawed seriously flawed was not what we observed. We didn't see, see it being hijacked by various multinational organizations or companies. What we saw was a free and fair election and wherever we went the Kenyans were able and they insisted on this to be placing their vote in a free and unhindered manner and the elections, certainly at the local level, which is where we were observing them, were exceptionally well organized. The report that we drafted brought this out and it stressed the fact that the Electoral Commission of the European Union had 1,500 results that were picked out of the local uh, elections and were compared with the published results and that no significant deviation had been identified in the results of one candidate or the under other candidate. And so if we are talking here about irregularities, then the irregularities were far smaller than what have, would have been required in order to change the outcome of that election and the trust in the democratic process in Kenya is supposed to have been upset and it is actually down to Mr. Odinga I think and it's regrettable that this particular uh, version of Mr. Odinga came to the fore because it had been this opportunity to build trust in the, the, org uh, the organs of democracy in the country but unfortunately that opportunity has been to a considerable degree lost and the country has been split but the, the option was there and I think we need to point the f f finger at the person w and the people that are actually responsible for it. The next speaker is Mrs. Vergiat. One minute. Merci. Thank you. I was a member of the EOM last August and I came back with mixed feelings. The Kenyans seemed to fear repetition of the violence uh, of 2007, but at the same time there were queues and people wanted to vote. Uh, we only uh, saw uh, part of the uh, vote counting and not the transmission. Uh, I'm very proud of what the Supreme Court decided like others. Uh, Uhuru Kenyatta was re-elected but with a very low turnout, uh, contrary to the turnout in August and Odinga uh, called for a boycott. According to the NGOs, at least uh, 80 people died and it seems there were a lot of cases of, of gang rape uh, with the police and uh, uniformed men being the perpetrators. A lot of people felt that technology would help um, uh, rebuild trust, but it was the opposite. The next few years will be crucial. Uh, so that uh, there is a respect and dialogue with the civil society to stave off our worst fears. Thank you. Mr. Castaldo, now one minute. Thank you, President. Well, Kenya isn't just a wonderful place where you can go on holiday and go on safari and spend time in wonderful resorts. 
it is first and foremost a country that uh, has been fighting for years in the name of a democratic dream and that democratic dream seemed to have become reality when the Supreme Court annulled the presidential elections because of the irregularities that were noted but that wasn't enough the opposition's boycotted the election there's been violence from the police there's been violence carried out by the armed forces, even against passers-by during demonstrations, the hundreds of women who were brutally raped. The state is once again returning to being the nightmare of its people. It's not enough simply to send out a report as a result of the electoral observation mission. The problem is that things are getting worse. The flame of democracy has been blown out by impunity. We need to defend the courage that the Kenyan citizens have shown. Thank you. Thank you, Herr Zeller. Thank you, Mr. Zeller. Three minutes, please. Oh, President. Thank you very much. The Commissioner and the previous speaker have already said that Kenya is one of the key countries in Africa when it comes to uh, stability, economic growth, and cooperation with the European Union. And that's why the elections in Kenya on the 8th of August last year were, ex uh, were anticipated with great uh, interest. And members of this House, <coughs> members of the Senate and uh, uh, others were present to observe it. There had been violent clashes at previous elections with many deaths. And in the pre-electoral period, there had been a considerable amount of violence and there was the pending question as to whether the elections would take place peacefully, not least because there was a new electoral, electronic electoral system that was to be tried. And shortly ahead of it, the person responsible for it in the Central Electoral Committee had been found murdered. And so it was all the more surprising that the outcome was positive. It went off peacefully and the Kenyans were very committed to it and set about it in a very disciplined manner. And uh, there was very little violence. The events after the elections are all the more regrettable, therefore. The loser of the election, Mr. Odinga, didn't want to accept his third defeat in a row and uh, wanted the uh, these elections to be annulled, but not the other five that have been carried out according to the same methods in the, in the presidential election. And sh shortly ahead of the election, he withdrew his candidacy. Now, we've heard from his people uh, that he's uh, taken an oath as president, but the conflict between the various, various ethnicities that uh, Kenyatta and Odinga belong to have risen up the agenda and have already brought about a number of deaths. The Electoral uh, Observation Mission of the EU has looked into the, uh, the processes and results and uh, said that it was transparent, fair, and done in a democratic manner. And it is highly regrettable that the publication of the Electoral Observation report has been banned by the Kenyan authorities. Kenya needs Europe and, uh, also as a partner to help promote stability in the region, but the EU requires Kenya as a part of the same reasons. And we must ensure that we maintain dialogue with those responsible in the region, but also the people in the country need to get the feeling that the EU stands by them in this difficult situation that they are in and won't leave them alone on their own. Thank you very much. Mrs Gill, two minutes. Micro, micro please. President, Commissioner, I start again. When Kenyan people, including five million young people, went to the ballot boxes last year, their hope was to help shape the future of their country. It is deeply disappointing that political leaders and security forces traded this for dispute and division, intimidating citizens, polling staff, civil society and the judiciary ahead of the October rerun. The result is a country bitterly divided along political and ethnic lines at a time when the EU is looking at Kenya to be the engine of growth for East Africa and a partner in managing migration. We are one of the most generous providers of aid, half a billion in the current financing period. 
which are projects under the Africa Trust Fund. Our priority should be to use this as a leverage to support democracy and civil society in a meaningful way, not as a tick box exercise, but we really have got to ensure that recommendations made by electoral observation missions are fully implemented and are in sync with the projects we are supporting there. Commissioner, numerous priorities need to be addressed, but I will highlight one in particular which other colleagues have already spoken about, the horrifying and widespread use of sexual violence against women and girls by police and security forces. In 2007 and 8, electoral violence, thousands of women were raped. This was met by impunity and indifference by the Kenyan government. And 10 years on, we're really seeing a repeat of the same atrocious crimes documented in a chilling report by Human Rights Watch. So my question to you, Commissioner, is will we make accountability for sexual violence and inclusiveness of women a priority for our relations with Kenya? And secondly, how do we move from this tick box approach to democracy building and engaging civil society in Kenya in a meaningful way? And finally, how will we ensure a proper long-term follow-up of vital recommendations on these and other issues, an area which there is, I think, a significant room for improvement as far as our EOMs are concerned. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Frau Sanchez Thank you, Mrs. Sanchez Caldentena, for one minute, please. Gracias, Presidenta. Thank you, Madam President. The European Union and Kenya are preferential partners, but despite this, it seems that we have forgotten some of the provisions in the Cotonou Agreement. While we were promoting those that represent strictly um, commercial interest provisions, others have fallen by the wayside. For example, to fight against money laundering and tax evasion, uh, to bolster the judicial system, to provide financial assistance to food sovereignty programs, and when it comes to human rights, to put pressure in order to develop uh, human rights defenders programs and to bolster civil society. We should also say that uh, Kenya has 60,000 refugees that are in a, a, a state of complete abandonment. We must also put pressure on the Kenyan government so that it starts uh, all-encompassing and inclusive uh, national reconciliation program in order uh, in order to uh, stop divisions, because if this doesn't happen, then democracy will not be prevail. Sharks, you have three minutes. Thank you, Mr. Polchak. Three minutes, please. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I agree with uh, most of the previous speakers have said. Uh, the new president, Uhuru Kenyatta, has sworn um, an oath, and uh, he is going to be uh, the next uh, Kenyan president. Uh, the opposition has not acknowledged that, uh, but um, even um, one regional organization uh, which um, has monitored uh, the election claims uh, that uh, they were okay. Uh, police uh, is attacking um, the people uh, manifesting in the streets, and I think that is not acceptable. Uh, during uh, the last elections, more than 70 people uh, died, uh, and we have to keep that in mind. The opposition claims uh, that uh, the elections um, were manipulated, but uh, still the fact is that the president has sworn an oath. Uh, Great Britain, um, for example, as well as uh, Mrs. Mogherini congratulated um, Mr. Kenyatta uh, to the election. So uh, what can we do now? I believe that we have to uh, support uh, the efforts of the group led by Kofi Annan um, so that uh, democracy can uh, be fostered in Kenya. The Council uh, has also noted uh, that the international community has to support the dialogue led by Kofi Annan. 
Uh, in my opinion, it is also crucial to support the activities by the UN. The UN is trying to react to uh, the events in Kenya at the political level, but at the same time, it is trying to support uh, Kenyan citizens on the ground. I believe it is important uh, for the European Union not only to lead a, uh, so, uh, to lead a political dialogue, but also to help uh, Kenyan people on the ground. Until uh, there is a legitimate a political solution, the European Union and the member states uh, cannot uh, maintain a status quo uh, with Kenya. We have to monitor uh, the situation in Kenya very closely. We have to aim at ending uh, the violence and ensuring a democracy, stability and the rule of law. Uh, I believe uh, that is what the European Union should do now. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, sir. Nunhata Assis. Thank you. Mr. Assis, now you have the floor for one minute. Thank you very much, uh, President Commissioner. Now, what happened in Kenya last year in electoral terms? There's an interruption. The speaker stops. So... What took place last, year, place last year reflects the major difficulties and contradictions that affect the African continent. Now we have some new hope in Africa, the hope of economic growth, economic development, construction and uh, the consolidation of democracy and respect for human rights. Unfortunately, we also have other very significant changes that are less positive. We also see a contradictory situation. On the one hand, you have a people who have a great desire to take part in democratic elections, five million young people who wanted to get involved in this great democratic act. Then we have the unprecedented action of a Supreme Court that said that the elections had to be repeated because uh, the legal rules had not been followed. I mean, that is a key basis for every democracy, the separation of powers. But then we have a lack of leadership, political leadership. There's a lack of constructive leadership in the country. Now, the role of the European Union is not a colonial role. The European Union's role needs to be to help to consolidate development and to consolidate the democratic institutions in Africa in general and in Kenya in specifically. Thank you. Mr. Pospisil, two and a half minutes. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. I will uh, pick up on what, my, what the previous speakers have said. Kenya is a key country in East Africa. It is a key partner, trade partner. Uh, we are more or less evaluating the electoral year in Kenya, 2017. There are many uh, issues there that have been discussed, protests, people who have unfortunately died during the protests. Uh, on the other hand, the situation in Kenya is not um, as bad as in other African countries where there are civil wars and Islamic terrorist organizations. Despite this, much can be improved. Uh, I am happy that the debate um, now means that the voice of the European Parliament is more or less united in that we are calling upon political forces in Kenya to cooperate. We're calling upon the uh, defeated candidate in the presidential election or the candidate that didn't run in October uh, to respect the winner of the elections because what is the solution for Kenya? Uh, we need peace and create um, room for con reconciliation, reform, uh, functioning of the state and the permanent questioning of uh, the presidential election results will lead nowhere, particularly after the election results have been recognized by the international community. And as uh, my colleague uh, Dr. Polchak said, uh, UK has recognized the result that the position of the UK is of course a uh, key in respect to Kenya. There are uh, 
interesting and um, positive uh, points. For example, the Supreme Court was not afraid to abolish the first presidential elections when they found it was not in compliance with the law. The court acted, the court responded, so the Supreme Court of Kenya is um, independent, which is positive. Uh, but for the future, uh, it's important that all irregularities um, during the elections um, is something that, that where the EU should call upon the Kenyan politicians to remove, to eliminate this issue by changing the electoral law. Uh, so let's um, mm, uh, make a, a use our influence over the Kenyan president to make sure the country continues to develop. Thank you, President. Commissioner, dear colleagues, after a difficult political year for Kenya, unfortunately the situation in the country remains extremely tense and volatile. We are concerned with the prolonged period of instability and the latest developments. The enthusiasm and commitment of the Kenyan people to the democratic process and to shaping the country's future has been marred by tensions amongst political forces escalating into outright violence. And many were the electoral process shortcomings identified by the EU election observation mission led by our colleague Shake. Since the elections, the situation has failed to stabilize and the use of force by the police and the persistent attacks against human rights defenders on the ground are a cause of grave concern. It is high time for all forces in Kenya to show political maturity and to come together to lay the preconditions for an environment conducive to constructive dialogue in order to address the many challenges the country faces today. Thank you, Mrs. Michaela Giuffrida. Thank you very much. Uh, Cancelled elections in August, then there were new elections, then there were appeals, there was police uh, violence, but yet the people are tenacious and stand proud. Uh, after the uh, EOM in Kenya, there's even more reason for us to be even more committed and to keep an eye on what is happening in the country and to promote cooperation, a sound electoral system to strengthen the judicial powers in order to uh, help the people, the Kenyan people, the government itself, the institutions have the right to have a, a stronger democracy. There has to be better access to resources and we all have to make sure uh, and fight hard so that farmers, especially young farmers, have better access to land and can uh, grow crops on the land. Uh, everyone should be guaranteed uh, the right to water. This is extremely important in uh, Kenya and in the whole of Africa. So much is at stake and we have to uh, act as guarantors. Thank you. Jufrida, now we have time for catch day procedure. Uh, first speaker, uh, uh, Deputy Michael Galler. Michael Galler. Yeah, liebe Kolleginnen und Kollegen. Colleagues, we would like to see Kenya as a stable and prosperous country. And I hope that isn't just wishful thinking. I do think that as part of our cooperation, we have a role to play to ensure that in Kenya there is stability politically and economically speaking and that it improves. And we've got the electoral observation mission that we send and we haven't got any particularly special rules for Kenya. We have the rules that we apply everywhere. And I expect therefore from the commission and also from the European uh, External Action Service that they stand f four square behind our chief electoral observer who's done excellent work and will not allow various political sides uh, in Kenya to be randomly criticized. It's a bit like uh, the Vice President talking down a colleague, and I do hope that this is the final time that this Vice President will be in the chair. Uh, next speaker, Akundom uh, Deputat, Doru Claudia Fransulica. Varok, a minute. Bardzo dziękuję, Panie President. 
Following the worrying situation in Kenya, especially regarding the disappointment of last year's presidential elections, I would like to express my support to the Kenyan people involved in the democratic life. Unfortunately, the last elections brought frustrations after repeated confrontation of the opposition against the Electronic Commission, during of which more than 90 people died shot by police. In the light of these violent and tragic episodes, Kenya's democratic functioning and the situation of human rights defenders weakened. Therefore, I would like to support the call to immediately end the violent conflict and to encourage the political forces in Kenya to find solutions. And the European Union commissioners has to play a very important role on this situation using its full tools of soft power. And last but not least, I would like to publicly, publicly thank Vice President Czarnecki for its activity as Vice President of this Parliament. Thank you, Vice President. Multumesc, dom deputat Frunzulica, esis urestis notis Marias. Mr. Marias, you have the floor, sir. Thank you very much, President. Kenya seemed to be a successful country from many points of view, but yet there is land grabbing. The Kenyan people need access to health care and education. Exploitation by multinationals continues and public debt uh, is going upwards. This is the backdrop for uh, the uh, political reality. There is a clientelist state and the rule of law and uh, protection of civil liberties aren't respected. The situation in Kenya is out of control. Um, those who are in favor of the president are clashing with uh, the, those who support the opponents, and there has also been uh, the rape of women. Unfortunately, Kenya lost the opportunity for a democratic transition to democracy, and the EU is, has to play a role in helping the situation. But Kenyans have to realize that if they don't stand united and tackle the economic challenges of their country, no foreigner will provide the solution. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Marias. Next speaker is Francis Voleftis Georgios Epitideos. Mr. Georgios Epitideos, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Because of its geographic, geographic location and because of the stability in the country, Kenya is a country of strategic importance for peace and stability in the Horn of Africa. It has an impact on all its neighboring countries. Moreover, it uh, guarantees uh, smooth trade and uh, the transfer of humanitarian assistance from the EU to the Horn of Africa through the Red Sea. And also, of course, there it fights against religious uh, fanaticism and um, the trafficking in uh, humans and drugs. Uh, so if it is destabilized and it cannot carry out these activities, there will be a, a huge consequences for the European Union. So for this reason, the European Union has to uh, support uh, a stable Kenya and get in touch with the government and the opposition and try and contribute to more democracy in Kenya. And in this way, uh, EU interests as a whole will be protected. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Epitidios. Thank you very much. And now, on behalf of the Vice uh, President, the High Representative, I, uh, the floor will be taken by um, Ms. Malmström. Commissioner Malmström, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I think this has been a very useful exchange. And as someone said, uh, the voice of European Parliament is basically united. And that is important. We have sent a strong message to Kenya and the Kenyan people. I would like to thank you for your interventions and also on behalf of the uh, High Representative Vice President uh, thank again Mrs. Shake and uh, her team for the fantastic job that you have been doing and also the people on the ground in Kenya who made that uh, possible, everybody involved in the election observation uh, mission. The report and the recommendations 
that the mission produced are very useful and helpful, I think. And the European Union will continue to engage with Kenya to support it in its way to strengthen democracy and the rule of law. As has been said, uh, Kenya is an important friend and people. We will stand by the Kenyan people. Uh, I also want to use this opportunity also on behalf of the um, High Representative to extend my gratitude to all the European electoral missions and the teams in the European Parliament and the AS that make such essential contributions to peace and democracy all across the world. So thank you very much, Mr. President, for this debate. Thank you very much, Madam Commissioner. The debate is closed. Let us proceed to the report by Mr. Buchner, Control of Export Transfer Brokering, Technical assistant, Assistance and Transit of Dual Use Items. I give the floor to the rapporteur. Mr. Buchner has the floor.